Okay, so I gotta get stop recording. And okay. I think I'm going to the agenda. Yep. Okay. This is a special I'm gonna forget that you said all that. This is a special meeting of the um, board of directors on uh, March 3rd, 2021 at 8.30 a.m. Uh, being conducted by Zoom. So Heather, it's all yours. I, I won't go into the other stuff Kate does because she does it too, too quick. Yeah, I don't ever retain it. Um, hold on a minute here. So I'm going to do a roll call, Heather King. I am here. Um, John Carmelo. Here. Okay, Albert Johnson. Watson. <laughs> Watson? Yeah, you said Johnson. <laughs> Did I say yeah. Johnson? Yeah. Uh, hold on a minute. I was going to say, I don't know get... Albert Johnson. <laughs> no, I don't know. <laughs> well, you need to say that to me because I'm like, you got to, and so many names I deal with on a pretty constant basis. So my apologies, Mr. Albert. <laughs> <laughs> I think I was calling, calling Brian Barker, Brian Baker, Brian Barker. I get those confused too sometimes. So my apologies. I'm not the best with names. Um, Pat Riley. Pam Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, everything froze up. What happened? <laughs> All right, hold on a minute. Let me pull Sorry. up some everybody's I, correct names. So, I couldn't help myself. <laughs> I love it. I am. Um, I. That's what I like. <laughs> One of, the, one of these days, I'm going to meet all you guys in person. Oh, okay. we're That'll fun. Be great. <laughs> yeah. We're fun. Okay. Let me see here. Let's get this here. Um, I'm trying to find. Okay. Um, Andrew Cooper? Here. Suzanne Spelling? Yep. Here. Jeanette Nicholson? Here. John Cubitt? No, Christina Maribel. Present. Okay, and Brian Barker slash Baker. Okay, um, I'm going to, we have a quorum. I'm gonna turn this over to Suzanne. Okay. We have on the agenda today, the resolution to award the RFP for uh, real estate services. Okay, so um, the marketing committee, along with Tony and Kate, uh, met with a third firm. Um, I don't have, Tony, what's the name of the firm? It's Irving. Um, Venture, Venture Realty Solutions. Venture Realties. And we, we loved them. We, we thought that they would be perfect for the job. Uh, they are a firm. Well, there's two people who would be dealing with us, um, at least initially, and that is the owner, Irving Ackerman, and um, his his uh, agent, whose name is, Virginia, somebody help me. Virginia Rowe. Hold on. Right. Yeah. And, Don't ask uh, me to say the name today. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we asked them a, a uh, group of questions re regarding to their familiarity with land banks and with Troy, with Troy's housing stock, with uh, North Central. And they just came through with flying colors. Both of them were working with Albany Land Bank up until recently. And since many of our policies were derived from the things that the Albany Land Bank was doing, they actually wrote and initiated some of those policies. So we are getting uh, really great people if we vote to, um, to take them on. Their financial uh, requirements from us were reasonable and, and, uh, and just in every way, they, we were all very impressed with them. Um, so the committee wholeheartedly recommends engaging them and, and having the land bank vote to uh, to have them as our agents. Suzanne, could I add one thing? Yeah. Uh, I'd just like to say that we all know that um, selling these properties is, is really difficult at best. And I think the re part of the reason, at least for me, that I was so impressed was 
these folks actually set up programs to make it easier. Instead of having roadblocks, instead of problems, they were looking at opportunities and, and actually, you know, set up programs to help folks do it. So um, not only were they familiar with uh, um, the purchase agreement and all of that, but um, I just had a real sense that, wow, maybe, 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 maybe this will really, really work. <laughs> yeah, I agree. They, they were very impressive in terms of having programs in mind, uh, working with TAP or a trip and working with uh, lenders and really helping us get owner occupants from North Central or from the same sort of demographics that we have here in North Central into our houses and realizing also that some of the houses would probably end up going to developers to flip just because of financial reasons, but um, they just had a well-rounded look at the whole thing. And I think they would be very helpful to us, to our mission and uh, just all around great, good partners, not just employees looking to, or real estate agents looking to um, you know, make money. They were really committed to the community and the people in it. So that was great. Yeah. Your commission. Now you said um, up till recently they worked with the Albany Land Bank. Are they no longer working with them? No, they are not. Uh, they left at different times. They were not together as a partnership or as a company when they worked for the land bank. That's where they met, as far as I can tell. And they left at different times for different reasons. Okay, Did you say it's, you got a copy of their uh, financials? Well, they, you know, their their percentage of of you know the proposed fee schedule, yeah, is right here on page. It's on page the first page of their oh, okay. of their RFP response. Um, residential is five percent for. I can tell you that it's typically seven percent is industry standard. Um, commercial is four percent, and commercial vacant land is four percent. Quick question. Something that um, I had a conversation with, are they also able to, part of the things that I was intrigued by is review properties that we are looking to potentially acquire mm -hmm. and help program those into the land bank's overall vision? Yes, they, okay. uh, Albert, uh, Irv. Irv, Irv, Irving especially is a contractor and he also has a um, asbestos and mold abatement company and he is, is very, um, you know, knowledgeable about construction and can walk into a building and do what we've been having. People like, um, you know, engineers and whatnot, look at valuating buildings and coming up with, well, I think this one is a, a keeper. This one only needs blah, 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 blah. This okay. one is a lost cause. And it can really give us a, a quick, estimation of what we could do. I mean, of course, we can go to the licensed experts later if we choose to, but they can just tell us, they can go through the foreclosure list and, you know, just give us a... a yeah, a, I'm looking here on page yeah, two. It yeah. says section D, approach to market analysis. They said they'll draw on its experience of pricing properties at the Albany County Land Bank where they created a reverse comparable market analysis by working backwards from after repair value. Once the after repair value is found, we then look at the financial investment that will be required by a proposed buyer to bring the property to code. Then we price the property accordingly in order to leave the buyer five to 10% equity once property is completed so they do not start out underwater. Okay. That, I don't know if it was one or both, but th that was part of their role at the Albany Land Bank was to do that exact thing, was to do the programming of properties. This is awesome. Um, the other thing I would just mention, this is Kate, um, is uh, Virginia talked about home ownership programs and um, you know connecting folks with community organizations um, funders, banks, et cetera. And I know Roberta from our seat community liaison is also working on that as well. Um, and Virginia and I did Land Bank 101 when we were at 
uh, Albany County Land Bank. Uh, so I think Virginia could be some help to that um, uh, presentation of, of the Land Bank 101. Um, she knows it inside and out. And I think it was Andrew who mentioned, you know, additional consulting, because I think the, the committee kind of thought, well, there's some other things, including doing the Land Bank 101, um, also helping us with applications, different things that they could consult on that it was an addition to um, getting a commission for a property sold. So uh, I don't know, Andrew, if you wanted to elaborate on that or the committee wanted to elaborate because, you know, I think you're, you're right. I mean, programming the properties are one thing because that's, you know, um, part of selling it. Um, but I think Tony, too, had some ideas about things that they could help with. So I didn't know if you wanted to discuss that a little bit because that would be sort of a as needed type thing. Uh, I did. I did mention it, although I don't. I don't know if I was the only one. Just that they they were so impressive. I, I considered that there were there was there was a lot more they could do for us. It was above and beyond, you know, the their proposal and, and our request. Um, I don't. I mean, I didn't. I couldn't map it out for you. <laughs> but yeah. They were just that impressive, um, and and clearly and motivated. And, and I, you know, initially anyway, my impression was would would be interested. Um, because they appear to be so committed to our same goals. Um, so that's, I mean, I, I don't know if we need how far to get into it, but um, I certainly can reinforce that that was, that was my impression. And, and they were, we were really, all of us in agreement that they um, were by far the best uh, applicant that we saw and, ab okay. and above and beyond what, what we were looking for. That's a breath of fresh air, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. This is my. This is definitely a key component that we we have been missing. Yeah. The other um, two. The other two firms we looked at, they had bits and pieces that were nice, but this group had the whole package. Okay. Are you okay with me taking a vote, or is there any other comments or questions or com anything? Uh, yeah, can I just suggest a couple of things? Um, yes. I mean, they sound good and everything. That's all well and good. But um, with my background in banking, we used to get audited all the time. And um, we always had to do back uh, searches on, um, well, reviews on vendors. So that's why I'm asking about, um, did you get a cop any of their financial information? Uh, the R we did not. The RP did not ask for that. Uh, can you? What what would we be looking for? Like, well, just to look at their operations. I mean, I mean, everything looks fine and dandy, but and plus, there's another thing we used to do for um, uh, underwriting loans. We used to get um, a printout from the Department of State, see if the company's in good standing. Yeah, we can. yeah we we can do that. Um... My only concern with all of that at this point is that we don't have a policy for doing that and we haven't done it in the past. And it would be like we're singling this one out. Um, so while I think you're right, there should be some investigation into um, major vendors. I think before we would do that, we'd have to talk about our policy and then apply it across the board. Okay. And you certain we certainly can do that. I mean, I, th I think governance committee could take a look at that. Um, but this one isn't necessarily a publicly bid contract. It's professional services. So the scrutiny really is a lot lower on this. Um, but I, I think we could, um, I could go on the Secretary of State right now and pull down, you know, the good standing stuff. We could do that. Well, also, they're licensed realtors, correct? Yeah. So, so they so they have a New York State license that is in good standing. Um, as far as if you're if you're concerned, I, I think there's a couple different things, you know. And Albert, I'm 
I'm an, a vendor of the particular bank that you are referring to. And they've never requested from me like a background check or, um, you know, anything to that matter. So um, it's because I'm providing a professional service in the capacity of my license. Some of my clients request that I have a background check and in order to go into, you know, because obviously I'm going into people's homes, but that's certainly something we can put on the agenda if, if we're going to engage somebody as a vendor. But if they have an, a standing license with Department of State and there's no violations or any disciplinary actions, you know, that they're, they're under that scrutiny as well. So that's a quality control check there too. Where yeah, do I mean, we, oh, I'm no, sorry. That's okay. I was just gonna say, you know, sometimes as a member of the bar, I'm asked to get a good standing certificate, you know, something like that. We certainly could ask for him to get one from the real estate board, but, you know, just from a, a uh, I guess, lawyer standpoint, um, paper can be clean and there could be stuff wrong. So, you know, I think we could do a certain level of due diligence um, and have something on record that we did that, but I'm always, you know, I guess critical or, um, you know, it's almost like if something were to happen you say, oh, well, we checked their license and it was clean. I mean, it doesn't really mean anything at that point, you know what I mean? But if this was a larger contract with public funds, enterprise, et cetera, we certainly could, and maybe we really should consider digging into it a little bit more with the caveat that, you know, the, the check's only going to be as good as what's on the record at that time, right? And it doesn't, in, in my humble opinion, it all it says is, you know, it looks good on paper. Could be true, could not be true. Could we make the uh, uh, approval conditional on checking a few things just before we sign a contract? I am, um, I'm adverse to that because we have never done that with any of the other RFPs that we have submitted. So if this is something that we want to entertain moving forward, I'd like to put it into our policies and procedures, but I don't want to all of a sudden start doing that when we have not had a pattern of behavior of doing that before. Correct. Um, so um, my question was sort of looking at it from the other side, which is under what conditions uh, are, are we able to end this uh, uh, presuming that we approve and move forward, uh, something happens or we discover something, under what conditions are we free to dissolve that relationship? So, well, we've, that we've, we just gone, we've just gone through it. I mean, I, I sort of, that's what I thought, but, but that's right. That's the other side. If we can't do it ahead of time, we need to be clear that, well, if something comes up, it's not like we're well, locked in forever here, right? Like we can say, so, hey, working so as a licensed, what? so as a licensed realtor or as a licensed appraiser, we're bound by a code of ethics that's tied to our license. And if we are found in violation of that, we are subject to disciplinary action by New York State Division of Licensing Services, sanctions, or having our license removed. So we are supposed to conduct ourselves in a professional capacity promoting public trust. And if we do not, then, then we're in trouble. So you file a complaint, you go through. So we're very um, proactive in maintaining that level of professionalism. So I think there's a degree of checks and balances right there with the nature of the license that's held. But if you, um, and I don't wanna get into too much detail with, um, with what's happened in the past, but I have good faith in Kate too to handle things, and there is a there is a listing agreement contract. Am I correct, Kate, or no? Yes, and I was just looking at that right now to back up what you're saying and to help an answer Andrew's question. And generally, it's for a, a one year term, and that's what I would suggest here. But there is in paragraph 15 a termination clause, and um, you can terminate, you know, a listing broker's uh, agreement, um, what usually happens that's customary in the industry is that anything that was pending or that they had listed, um, they generally have a right to collect commission on that. So um, except when the term 
is up and the contract ends na naturally, right? So, um, you know, we can terminate this contract pretty much at any time. And then, you know, whatever they had been working on, they'd still have the right, it's almost like a lien um, to collect the commission on that. Um, so, you know, I'm comfortable enough legally where if we had to get out, we certainly could. Um, and, you know, um, a year from now, when we do our housekeeping resolution, probably we'll come back and there'll be a second, like you would re-up the contract or not, you know, at that time. Are there any other questions? I will, I will tell you, Andrew, we live in constant fear of Department of State. <laughs> Good. <laughs> yeah. Tony asked me well, sometimes I mean, why, I'm email, asked, why I'm emailing like, him at midnight because I don't every sleep. Every professional has a, you know, lives and dies by their yep. reputation and or whatever licensing process there is. And I mean, and and yet, and, and not speaking specifically to any anything on our table here, but just, but then people are people and people all mm -hmm. over the place do things they shouldn't. So. <laughs> Yes, it's always no, fair to ask and, and consider, but I, I mean, I don't, I don't have significant concerns. I just was wanting to make sure we all understood the, um, the whole, you know, the whole process start to end. So Kate, am I hearing if we want to get out, if there's something that's, that's done inappropriately, we can, we can terminate the contract and, and yes. we, we have, we have done that. So we've executed that right previously. Yes. Okay. Are there any other questions? All right, I'm gonna go ahead then and um, I'm going to, is there a motion to approve? I make a motion, motion. that we approve um, the hiring of, of the firm and they become our real estate agents. Do we have a second? That was Suzanne I, Spellen. I second. Okay, is this Christina? It is. Okay. Um, Heather King, I vote yes. Suzanne Spellen made the motion. Jeanette Nicholson, how do you vote? Yes. Okay, Christina Maribel seconded it. Patricia Riley slash Ryan. Yes. <laughs> Andrew yes. Cooper. Yes. All right, John Cuban is absent. John Carmelo. Yes. Albert Watson. Yes. <laughs> All right, and Brian Barker is absent. Yes. No. Oh, I'm you're here. here? Yay! Hi, Brian Barker slash Baker. Okay, so um, that's unanimous. Nobody. Yay. Congratulations. Yay. Yes, it's a nice piece to the puzzle has been filled. Um, I'm going to make one thing before I make a motion to adjourn. If you have not submitted to me your feedback on the executive Tony, clo close your ears. Yep. The executive director. <laughs> Could you please do so as it's time is now starting to become a little bit of the essence. And I understand if Albert, um, Patricia and Christina, you're relatively new and you may not have enough exposure to Tony or experience with Tony, depending upon your experience. Um, it, you certainly can abstain, but I would appreciate everybody's feedback sooner rather than later. Heather, if you haven't done so already. It's cute. It I, yeah. Heather, it's Kate. I have two yeah. that I will send you. Thank you. I have yep. I have one so far. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much, everybody, for making this happen today. Can I get a motion? Uh -huh. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any, oppo Aye. any opposed? Yeah, just... No. All right. I've got to make up the motion in a second. <laughs> Suzanne made the, the motion and Christina made the second. Okay. Well, I, I've got that for the resolution, but I'll put it after the close of the meeting too. So. Okay. All right. All right. Goodbye, everybody. We'll see Thanks. you soon. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Take Good care. Day. Bye. Bye-bye.